This Mimer was delivered by the Rebbe, Shabbos Parshas Neach, the sixth day of Cheshvah, in the year 1986, Tavshunem Zayin. And it has a, a, still has a, a high holiday feel to it. Because the truth is, until Zayin Adar, Zayin Cheshvah, we're still a little bit connected to our holidays, but I digress. That's only my observation. The Mimer opens with the words that are found in the beginning of Parshas Neach, not right in the beginning, but in, in the opening narrative, when Neach is told to make a table. Hashem gives him the dimensions of this ark, of this big barge, what it's going to look like. And then Hashem says to him, Tzoyar tasel You will make a tzohar. Or maybe bazeh, The Rebbe begins the Maimon by quoting a Maimon of the Friedrich Rebbe, of Rosh Hashanah of the year 1946, which is a, a hemshech of Tishrei. And the Rebbe says that there's this notion that after 40 years of hearing a teaching from one's, from one's Rebbe, one comes to a full understanding of it. So it's as if the Rebbe says, like, after 40 years after hearing this mimer, after studying this mimer from his Rebbe, that he's better equipped to analyze and to delve into the details. Anyway, in the Friedrich Rebbe's mimer, he quotes Rashi. Rashi on the Pasuk says, that there are two opinions about what a tzohar is. The yesh emrim, there is one opinion, one school of thought, it's a chaloin, it's a window. The yesh emrim, and others maintain, even teve hame idolehem a luminescent stone. So, it certainly wasn't a floodlight, but it would provide some light. This glowing stone would provide some light. Bottom line, tzohar is a source of light. The question is, is it a source of light? Because it's, it's, a, it's glass, it allows outside light into the teva, or because it's a stone that glows. That's the question. The Friedrich Rebbe stops here, and he says, one second. He analyzes this very carefully. He says, We have to understand. This is talking about a source of light. You should create light. He says, Light is a creation of God. The photonic reality that we call light was created by God at a certain point in the beginning of creation. As it is written, although, of course, this is not an exact reference because the light that we talk about in that Pasuk was later hidden away for Tzadikim, and it was a light that was created later on by Hashem. Hashem replaced it with a different light. But the, but the Pasuk still says, God said, let there be light. One of the most famous statements in the Bible, everybody knows, God said, let there be light, and there was light. So if God said, let there be light, and it was God who created light, what does that mean, make? You should make light. It's not It's not you should make light, you should maybe allow light in. You can't make light. You can't manufacture light. So why does it say we should make light? Why do we use that language? Of course, this is not a, on a technical level, there's not really a question here. But the question is more on a theological and philosophical level. Since light, by its definition, the photonic reality that illuminates our environment and our surroundings and gives us clarity, is something that's created by God. So if it's Hashem's work, it's Hashem's asiyah, it shouldn't be our work. It shouldn't be called, you make it. The word tase seems to be a little bit incongruous. It shouldn't be tase. It shouldn't be you make it. It should be Hashem should make this light. Why don't we emphasize the idea that Hashem makes the light? We allow the light in. That's the question. In that particular Maimer, the Friedrich Rebbe explains the two meanings of Tzoyar along the lines of Avedis Hashem. He explains what that means within the framework of serving Hashem, what, what's the difference between a skylight and a luminous stone, and he explains how there has to be this idea of tasa. But the Rebbe does not follow the, the, the trajectory of that mimer at all. He doesn't use the, the thought process and the novelty and, and, and the light of that mimer. He just uses that mimer as a springboard. And the springboard is that this, way this puts us into is we create light, God creates light. The Rebbe now moves with this, with this idea that God creates light. Now we create light in a little bit of a different direction. 
There is a known Pirush of Meirenu, our Baal Shem Tev, our master, the Baal Shem Tev, which is brought in many places in Chesidus, including my mother, the Pritik Rebbe. The Tevas Noyach, that the Ark of Noyach, which is called a Teva, it's not a boat, it's not a Sfina. A Sfina is built to go from one destination to the next. The Sfina is a method of travel. The Teva was a method of survival. It was a big barge. It was a floating craft. It was a survival craft, not a traveling craft. So when we talk about this idea that the teva, or the ark, which literally means a box, because that's how it was shaped, it's basically a big box, that, that, that that's how we describe the watercraft of Nayach. Said the Baal Shem Tev, that shares a common root with the word teva, which means word. So it's the same, same letters, same pronunciation. You could call it a box, or it could be words. And the Baal Shem Tev said that there's a connection that the teva of Noach is reminiscent of the teva of tefillah and Torah, of the words of prayer, the words of Torah study. V'chein Pidush HaPasach, the Baal Shem Tev goes on to explain the verse, Boy ata v'chol beischa el ha-teva, let you and your family go into the ark, says the Baal Shem Tev, tzarecha adam lahach nises atzmei, a person must bring himself into teves, the Torah Utfila. He has to bring himself into the reality, the words of the prayer, of the Torah study. You have to enter into, you have to become subsumed in the words of prayer. You have to become totally sheltered, if you will, or surrounded by the words of Torah study. That, that's, that's the meaning of to study Torah, to daven properly. Like they say in English, you have to get into it. Get into it. So that's, that's what the Bashanta said, that's the deeper teaching. The Rebbe adds parenthetically, that this pasuk that speaks about Noach on a literal level, it's actually telling Noach to get into the into the craft, into the ark. That mefarshem Here we are explaining it as a, a methodology in Avedis Hashem, but it's talking to Noach. Noach wasn't even Jewish. How could we tell a commandment to Noach to survive because of raging floodwaters? How could we say that that's a, a, a lesson, a directive in our own Aveda, in the, in the service of a, that a Jew has to Hashem? So the Rebbe says that this could be a well understood, according to the beer, famous explanation of the Rebbe Rashav, which is found in the Hemshech of Tafresh Ayin Beis. But over there it's brought down the fact that in our Musaf service on Rosh Hashanah, we have psukim, we have verses of memory, because we know along with the shofar comes verses, verses of majesty, verses of memory, and verses of shofar blasts. So in the verses of memory, we say, You also remembered Noach. The The way that Rebbe Rashab explains it over there is precisely because Noach did not have any virtues. And precisely because Noach did not earn, if you will, this covenant with Hashem. This is the covenant we learned about yesterday. So this is actually the essence of the covenant. The covenant with Avraham is about Teda, mitzvahs. The covenant with Moshe is about tshuva. The covenant with Noach is just a covenant because it represents the intrinsic value of Neshama Yisrael, as the Rebbe Rashab explains there. So therefore, our Rebbe says, if the inyanim of Noach, if Noach's covenant can be construed or it can be understood in the framework of illuminating regarding the Aveda of each and every single Yid, so then everything about Noach can be imported from the area, the arena of the technicality of talking to Noach into the, into the theoretical teaching of, 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 of the every single Yid service to Hashem. Okay, so you're fo following the logic here? So here we say, Tzoyer Tasa, you should make yourself. That's, that's certainly on the surface problematic, you should make yourself. It's not about you. How do you, how do you make yourself? It's God's light. So the Rebbe says, one second, we have this business, it says, <coughs> Excuse me. We have this business that we should go into. Go into the, into the Teva. And that that's speaking to every single Yid. 
Tzorach Leimar. From this we would have to say then, that when it says Tzoyar Tasa Teva, that Noyach is told to make a Tzohar to the Teva, what would that mean? If the Teva refers to Torah and to Tefillah, and then the Torah gives a directive of Tzohar Tasa Teva, make a source of light for the Torah and the Tefillah, what does that tell you? It means, it means we should illuminate the Torah and the Tefillah. We should light up Torah and Tefillah. Torah and Tefillah is dark, so we should put a light over there. What does that mean? How does that work? This is, this is sin is even more incongruous. You're going to fix the Torah. Make the Torah lit up. Light up the Torah. You make it a Tzohar. You make it a source of light. What are you talking about? How are we going to fix the Torah? We're going to make the Torah a source of light? We're going to bring light to the Torah? The Torah is all given from on high, as we say in our Rosh Hashanah davening. I, I, I spoke to the, from, from the heavens, God says to you, that's a Pasuk in Parshish Yisrael, and then it's reflected in our Rosh Hashanah service with the words, from the heavens, the, the, my, my, the, your voice was heard. In other words, the whole idea of God spoke and God, and God communicated with us. Torah is godly. If Torah is godly, then how do you understand this idea that we should fix or illuminate? We should create light for the Torah. How do you create light for the Torah? It's the Torah. Something, something doesn't make sense over here. In other words, as difficult as it sounded before, the Friedrich Rebbe's question was, we should make light. Light is Hashem's light. We should reflect light. We should, we should allow light in. But the Rebbe is taking this question to a whole new level. Based on the teaching of the Baal Shem Tev, that the Teva actually refers to Torah and Tefillah. So if the Teva refers to Torah and Tefillah, essentially what we're saying then is that Tzor Tassel Teva means you should make a source of light for the Torah. You, me, we should make a source of light for the Torah. We should fix the Torah. My Indian Tzor Tassel Teva. How do you explain that part? In other words, we don't take the Baal teaching in a narrow way. It's just, uh, teva is Tefillah, Bayala Teva, get into davening. That's it. If the Baal Shem Tev said those words, that Torah is MS, if the Torah says that Teva refers to davening, first a Torah study, then it has to refer to this in a broad ap- application. All the ideas have to. If Boya La Teva means get into davening, you should go into, you should enter into the headspace, the mind space, the heart space of Torah and Tefillah, of prayer and of, and, of, and of study, then if that's the case, then the idea of Tzor Tassel Teva also has to apply. And that presents a huge question. How could we Make it so hard, make a source of light for the concept of Torah The Rebbe takes this further. The Hini Yadua, it's known that there is an interpretation, which is also from the Baal Shem Tev, actually, that the Pasuk Tzohar, Tasa Teva, it says Tzohar. The Baal Shem Tev says, the Inyan Tzohar, Tasa Teva, what does it mean, make a light? In a deeper way, which the Torah speaks to us in many levels, in many dimensions, on a literal level, Noah had to build an ark and make sure there was a source of some light. But in a deeper way, Noah's job was to try to mitigate the divine decree. Initially, there was a decree, a very harsh decree, with regard to the Mabel. God says to Noah, Noah, please, try to mitigate that. Soyar Tasalateva. The teva should be a mechanism to turn the tzohar, which turn 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 something about with uh, to, to kind of shift things, to transform things. Namely, midas hadin lemidas harachamim. That the midah of din, that the measure of divine, uh, the attribute of divine judgment, should change into an attribute of divine mercy, because the Hebrew letters tzohar also spell the Hebrew words of. Tzara. Tzara means? Tzaras. Not good. And the Rebbe says, Pirosh, that means that they have this idea of being squeezed. That's the idea of a tzara. So if this is the idea of tzara, we have to change tzara into tzohar, which means pain, into light, what does this mean? Says the Rebbe, the Yisab is if you'd see the find in the book of, of formation which is a very early book of Kabbalah that it says Beis Avonim Boina is Beis Batim two stones build two homes 
Gimel Avadim, three stones, Bainas Shishobatim, they built six homes. Like many other statements in Kabbalah, it sounds like pure gibberish, makes no sense. Two stones build two homes? <laughs> How can two stones build two? You can't, you can't build anything with two stones. Two cornerstones build a home? It builds a corner, it doesn't build a home. And certainly three stones don't build six homes. So what does it mean? It's a euphemism. The idea of a home is a place where people dwell. The idea of a home in this context is the notion that we are having ideas dwell. And what do ideas dwell? How are ideas communicated? By virtue of grunting? Words. Words. If I don't have words, I can't convey ideas. I have an idea. Mm. What? Mm. I don't know what you're talking about. Use your words. A child starts to grow up and the kid freaks out and he has a, he's having a meltdown. What do you tell the kid? Use your words. Find your words. Use your words. And the child gets, learns as he gets older to find his words. As, as a, even adults get angry. It's that sputtering like an engine and they can't speak straight. So you can't control of yourself. Use your words. Because words, within a word, dwells a meaning, a message. That's like a home. It's a euphemism. Now we understand that there are three letters. So to, to, let's say we have Aleph and Beis. What two words can dwell in Aleph and Beis? Av and Ba. And ba. Father and come. Those are two words. So if a person was waiting for hours to come somewhere, and you finally say, Ba, come. Wow. That, that's, a, that's a big message. He, 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 he said you can come. Or call the right person father. That's or the wrong person father. Av. It's a very big word. It's a big house. So we have three words, three letters, six words. In other words, that in the Hebrew words tzadik hedesh, there are six ways of being able to configure those three words. Think of Scrabble. So you Scrabble the words this way and you Scrabble them that way. Ukanoida shehet sirufim yuduim. That there are actually five ways of spelling tzadik hedesh meaningfully. And then the sixth way, we don't know what it means. Only one of those formations doesn't make any sense. It's just letters. There's, there's no word attached to it. Which doesn't mean that it's not a word. If Sefer Yitzhida says, it is a word. It's just we don't know what the word is. A lot of this is part, parts of Torah, parts of Lashon the holy tongue, the Torah, we don't understand. We don't know what it means. So one of the tzirufim, of tzadik reish hei, one of these three Hebrew letters is tzaruf. The echad menat sirufim, and one of the ways we can scramble the words, or scrabble them, is that instead of tzadik reish hei, tzara, which means pain, or sorrow, or difficulty, is tzohar. Tzohar means illumination, a source of light. The tachos ha the ultimate purpose and goal, is lahapech ha-tzara This is a big teaching. Hashem comes along and says, Hashem gives you a tzara. Do you know why he gave you a tzara? To turn it into a tzohar. Wow. It means this pain, I'm feeling squeezed, this is an opportunity. This is not God dismantling me. This is God dismantling me so that I can rebuild a better edifice. This is, this is a good thing. What? This is terrible. Oh, we don't know that. From this tzara could come out a tzohar. So that's the teaching of the Baal Shem Tev. It's a beautiful teaching and has, it's very rich. It has many applications in the, from, from everywhere, from theology to psychology and everything in between. A person, how a person looks at difficult situations. How you have to look at challenges. Look at challenges as a portal, as a gateway, a segue into a new and better reality. If you wouldn't have the pain of being squeezed, you wouldn't be able to go into the next reality just by means of a lame metaphor. So Rabbi Tversky has this, uh, the famous Rabbi Tversky has this little story about the lobster and the lobster shell. That if the lobster, how does the lobster grow? The shells are hard, the shells don't grow, but the lobster grows. So at some point he has to throw off the shell and it gets very painful, and then he's terrified to be eaten by some other sea, sea life. So he hides under a rock until he grows a new shell. And then he's very happy and he's flying around and the shell's swimming around, and what happens? He grows and the shell gets very, very uncomfortable. So what does he do? Throws off that shell, and he goes and goes a new shell. So this is a beautiful metaphor. See, when we have a tzara, when things are tight, what are you supposed to do about that? You're supposed to transcend that reality and grow a new reality as a result. He said, what's the problem with people today? They have pain. They go take a Valium. 
You want to take painkillers. So instead of dealing with the pain, instead of understanding that this is a kick in the pants for us to go to the next level, instead we kvetch and complain and say, just take, just take away the pain from me. But the pain is actually a segue to growth. Okay, a lot to be said about that. But that never brings it home. What, 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 what's, what's our objective here? Our objective here is to try to understand this business that we're, we're, we're putting everything in the frame of teva, of ark as word. As, 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 so once, if the ark is a word, and we, the question we had before is, so our kasa, you're going to fix the Torah? <laughs> you're going to make, you're going to bring light to the Torah. How fascinating, Mr. or Mrs. Illumination. You're going to bring light to the Torah. The Torah is dark. Oh, Baruch Hashem, thank God that you came along. So our tasa, you're going to make a light for the Torah. You're going to make a light. The davening was dark, but you know, Baruch Hashem, you're here now. What? That, really? Like, does that make any sense? And now it's getting even worse. Now we have this idea that a tzohar is made out of a tzara. You telling me that the Torah is a tzara? The Torah is a problem. It's a pain. I have to have to transcend it. I got I got to get rid of it. I got to turn it from a pain. I have to transform it into a light. What does that mean? So it'll be a beyase. This should make my hair stand on end. What's going on over here? Eich ef How is this possible? How could it be that a tzara should be a tzara? Everybody knows what tzaras are. The Torah is tzaras. Davening is tzaras? Oy vey, my davening is tzaras. I have to turn davening into a tzar from a tzar. Doesn't seem to make any sense. Achbi Yerein, you know, the explanation of this seemingly insurmountable challenge, this, this very, very strange concept in Torah where we, we're, we're getting these messages of we should, we should fix that which is perfect. We should illuminate that which is already filled with light. Even though the whole Torah is referred to by Ramban in his preface to the, his, his commentary in the Torah, that every single word is a name of God. What does it mean, a name of God? When you want to get somebody's attention, what do you do? The person's name is Betel. What do you do? You call Shmetel? No, you call Betel. When you get Shmetel's attention, you call Shmetel. When you get Betel's attention, what do you do? You call Betel. So what is a person's name? A name is a way to get somebody's attention. You want to get God's attention? You want his attention? Speak Torah. Because every Torah is a name of Hashem. That's one of the explanations of that, of that expression. And these are the words of the Rambam. The Rambam, in his commentary of Mishnayis, in, 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 um, in, chapter, in, chapter, in chapter Chelek, in Mesecha Sanhedrin, articulates what most people know as Yud Gimel Ikrim, as the 13 principles of faith. And in the eighth principle, he talks about the truth of Torah and the Rambam's words. The Rebbe quotes the Rambam's words here, and he says, It's Kedosha Bekedusha Sa Emes. It's holy with the holiness of truth. So it doesn't change. Because the truth doesn't change. Nonetheless, Avami Kol Makayim, Hamshacha Salamata, the way the Torah expresses itself in our world is in kazez in such a manner she yeshba medida vahagbala the Torah comes in a limited frame we're talking about this halacha not that halacha we're talking about this concept not a different concept the Torah comes within limited frames she'ena arucho me'eretz mido it's not wider than the widest land wider. it's not rechov minyam it's not bigger broader more spacious than the widest sea when a person toils in Torah, he's, he's serving Hashem. It's an Aveda Sa'adam. He doesn't just study. He doesn't just read, listen with half an ear when he's in class being given. He toils in Torah. They were able to bring an addition. You can develop a new novelty. You can unfold and unfurl the Torah because the Torah has all kinds of profundity and depth that's packed inside it. And you are now opening another detail. Torah continues to open. It's like an accordion. It opens and opens and opens and opens. And it's infinite amount of things we keep opening within the Torah. We keep revealing from within the Torah. But that's our job, actually. And it could be that a person has the schus, a person has the merit to find something new, fresh, that nobody ever noticed before in Torah. The Alter Rebbe says that it's actually a, an obligation, that a person has to toil in Torah his whole life to try to reach the one thing, because every one of us has the ability to add something into the Torah. Every one of us has to have a new awareness, a new epiphany, something which wasn't understood before you got to the Torah. And every one of us has an obligation to do that. So in the language of the Zohar, 
Torah says, keep, you keep discovery, mm -hmm. discovery within Torah, which ad shati aruch media, until you see the Torah is indeed infinite. Here we are, generation upon generation, hundreds of generations, and we keep finding novelty. We keep finding something fresh and something new and something dynamic. This, the idea of tzara, is not to be taken in a typical traditional sense, God forbid, chas v'shalom. It means a limitation. Hashem gave us the Torah in a limited frame, but he expected us to transcend those limitations. He expected us to push the envelope, to develop the Torah, of course, within the truth of Torah, not chas v'shalom, going away from the Torah, breaking the Torah, chas v'shalom. We don't break the Torah, we develop the Torah. See more profundity in the Torah. The shoyrash tevas tzara, the, la the origin of the word tzara is not pain, it's not sorrow, it's melashen tsar. it means narrow. That it says in Yiddish, eng. Azachvas is eng, it's narrow. Now, if you're, if you're talking about shoes, we are talking about a sh uh, 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 your, 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 your waistline, and the clothes you're wearing are narrow, and you're broader, it may be painful. So the tzara, the narrow nature of tsar will actually lead to tsar, to, to, literally to pain. But on a literal level, it doesn't mean pain, it means narrow. Meaning mokim tsar mugbal, a limited space. And space is not only a physical dimension, but you could speak about a frame of thought, a frame of speech, a frame of thinking that has a limit. It's limited to a certain framework. And through the toil, the effort of the Jewish people, we can turn this limited frame, superficially speaking, we can turn that, the Tmura Zesha Torah Kfishilo Mata, that instead of the Torah, the way it is below, not on high, and high the Torah is infinite, but the way the Torah is below, that instead of the Torah below, Mitzad Atzmai, if left to its own devices, so to speak, left alone, it's an idea of Torah, the Torah says this and not that. But then, Poilim, you're able to affect Shatiya Ba'if and the Tzohar. You bring about the idea of light. Oyer. Sha'amitis inyan hoyer. What is really, what is light really? If you, if you define light. Shemeyer b'chol makim b'lim medid v'agbala. Photons don't have a vessel. They don't have a place they fit into. Water has a specific area. What is like Shefa? What's called Shefa? Shefa means I'm giving you something. So the water has a certain mass even if the water is free-floating in outer space, which means you don't need a cup to hold it, it's still within a certain mass. But photons continue to spread. The nature of the photonic reality, it just spreads and spreads and spreads and spreads. And in theory, it can spread ad infinitum. How come the light is not seen from a very, very far distance? That's because the particles become spread so thin and because there are other particles in the air that eventually the photonic particles get lost. They're not visible anymore to the naked eye. But then you put on a pair of night vision goggles, which magnifies tiny points of photons, tiny points of light, 10,000 times, 20,000 times, all of a sudden everybody's in the dark and you're living in light. You see everything that's going on. How? Because you have the ability to magnify those photons. You can capture those photons because of your unique eyewear. You have fancy eyewear glasses that capture photons. But that means if the photons weren't there, would you be able to capture them? No. The, way, the, the, the technology of night vision goggles is not that you illuminate something miraculously only you can see and they can't. You're seeing the light that nobody else could see because the light's already there. And that's the nature of light. The, the photonic reality is so unique in that it's meir belimedida. It doesn't have limitations. Have a, the flood water, the water goes to a certain space. Uh, a, a mass, even gas, a cloud spreads. Here's where it is. This, this is where the cloud is. And you go beyond the cloud comes to light, you can't go beyond the cloud of light. The light travels so, so quickly, it just goes everywhere, it spills everywhere. Shamit, this is the real idea of Ur. The real idea of Ur is that there's no Medidavag Bala. It's got no limitation. Similarly, along the lines of Tzor Tasila Teva, when you make a Tzor for the Teva, for the words of Torah and Tefillah, the Tefillah Mitzad Atzmai, the prayer in and of itself is the Medidavag Bala. The prayer, it's a, the prayer book, it has a beginning and an end. Like we say in the verse that is this, according to the Zohar, you're mystically referring to prayer. The prayer is likened to a ladder, sula mutzav arza, that is rooted in the ground. The notion of eretz, of ground, is limitation. So reisha megiyash maima. But if you really start on the ladder of prayer, you can reach the very heavens. What does that mean? And shemitzad atzmai, prayer begins where? On the ground. But by idea through toil, magim l'shamayma, a 
Yid can reach the highest heavens. Bechinas Shamayim, you reach the heavens. Hamerch of Shalomayla, the true idea of, le- of, of breadth and spaciousness. Ba'ad, la Shamayma, Bechinas Shalomayla, Mishamayim, Shamayma, with a hey at the end, which is the idea of beyond the heavens of ferment as we know it, which is called the language of Chsidis, Bechinas Merchav Ha'atzmi. And the Rebbe goes on in this Mimer to talk about how this is what Rosh Hashanah is all about. How do we blow the shofar? The Pasuk says, Min HaMeitzar Karasika. Anani Merchav. I start narrow, and Hashem answers me in a spacious way. And the halacha actually is that the shofar must be blown from the narrow side. If you make a shofar, a shofar soft, and you make the narrow side very big, and you make the wide, the wide side very small, it's not a kosher shofar. It has to be what's organically small. And it has to come from a small, tiny space. From that tiny space, it gets broad and spacious. The Deb explains how this is all idea of Rosh Hashanah, and he brings out a teaching of the Marash, that when a year begins narrow and squeezed, in the end, it's very, very broad. In other words, that narrow spaces are a catalyst for growth. Similar to that silly lobster met- metaphor, but that's the point. The point is the narrowness is not to inhibit us. The narrowness is to make us grow into a, in a remarkable way. Perhaps we could use the methodology of a dam to understand this. So you bottle up the bottleneck. You bottle up all that water. Because you bottle up all that water, enormous power is subsequently released. They build dams in order to harness electricity because that creates the power. But without restraining and without narrowing, without creating tsar or tsara, we would never be able to get to the incredible profusion, the, the development which comes subsequently. And that, my dear friends, is the meaning of Tzohar Tasalacha on so many levels. Obviously, the challenges of life, we should take them and rotate them, turn them around, use them not as sources of pain or sorrow or difficulty, but rather as a source for incredible new growth. But in a, in, in a deeper way, even in our Vedas Hashem, through studying Torah and praying properly, we're able to transcend the limitations, the organic limitations of the Torah and Tefillah into the idea of true, spacious development and growth. And of course, perhaps one could add that here's the idea of Bechol Devader, Bechol Yom V'yayim, you got a bit sign. So what you, what you transcended for yesterday has to be done tomorrow. This is an ongoing process. And in fact, the definition of Torah itself.